market. And nobody in the last 30 years that I'm aware of has had a problem picketing. As I said, the only time I know we've had issues with picketing was in 1978 with teachers where they charged us with watching and besetting when we were picketing. And now this most recent time when they used tear gas and rubber bullets to disperse persons who were having a peaceful picket. And to me, that really takes us back many, many, many years and destroys what has been a common understanding that in Antigua and Barbuda, we enjoy the right to peaceful assembly, which includes the right to picket. Mm -hmm. Now, Section 22 of the Public Order Act, it says um, that Section 22, two, it says, nothing in this part shall operate to be construed as to or as operating to penalize or to prevent any lawful picketing carried on outside any official premises or any other lawful act done by or on behalf of a trade union in contemplation or in furtherance of a trade dispute. Now, the way that all previous commissioners of police have interpreted this, and it has now become part of the practice in Antigua and Barbuda that persons are not hindered in their right to conduct lawful picketing. Mm -hmm. And that would mean where you are not picketing for any unlawful purpose. For example, you're not seeking to um, instigate violence. You're not seeking to do anything which is unlawful. You're seeking merely to express yourself and your views in particular in, in relation to a particular matter. Mm -hmm. So you had, for example, um, Ambassador Lionel Hurst um, during the period of the United Progressive Party where he led a group many days picketing against the Citizenship by Investment Program. Mm -hmm. Nobody interfered with him. We've picketed many times. Nobody's have interfered with us. Very today, the same group carried out a picket and nobody interfered with them and everything went off peacefully. And there was one about three weeks ago. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So everything to me on Sunday was wrong in terms of the way the authorities handled it. If they felt that a crime had been committed, that is, that somebody had organized, as they say, an unlawful meeting, then just like they've done it, you charge the person and you let the magistrate decide that. Mm -hmm. But to launch this ferocious attack on people, I have not seen anything like that since I was a teenage boy somewhere around um, in the 60s when we had the state of emergency in Antigua um, as a result of the, the social and political unrest. But I, I don't know what could have happened to have really made this serious change in the outlook of the police authorities to rather than see how they can assist persons. Because, you see, they seem, they seem to be this thinking that the purpose of the police is to keep down, to stop it, rather than to assist you in exercising your fundamental right. And there would be nothing wrong with the police liaising with the leaders of that um, particular picket and explaining to them if they have to social distance, say, look, we don't want anybody standing so close. Mm -hmm. See if you can space out a bit. That's the way you police work with communities in order to make sure that there's no breach of the peace. So what happened on Sunday to me is a very backward step. It has not happened in our recent history. It takes us back to the old days when the people of the Caribbean had to fight for the right to assemble peacefully. And this was, uh, in my view, a, a blatant attack and a ferocious attack on the right to the constitutional right to peaceful assembly.